Now I'd like to call to order the regular meetings of the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, Victorville Redevelopment Agency, Victorville Water District, and City Council of the City of Victorville. As customary, we'll have the invocation by uh, uh, Pastor John Martin of the Victorville First Assembly of God, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by our Victorville Police Captain, uh, Mark Taylor. I'll bow your head, please. Lord, thank you for this evening and thank you for the city. Touch each of our minds and hearts this evening as we try to live within your light and your reason, not our selfish ends. Thank you. We now have uh, two presentations. Well, tonight, uh, it's my pleasure on behalf of the City Council and the employees of the City of Victorville uh, to present to Mark this plaque for his service to the City of Victorville. As, as you know from the last meeting, for those of you that were here, he is moving on to uh, administrative uh, crime, lab. crime lab way, yes. And, uh, and we have a new captain coming into Victorville. But uh, Mark has been with us. Uh, he has served the city very well. And we have a, a plaque presented to Captain Mark Taylor in recognition of your service and dedication to the citizens of Victorville. We are indebted to you for your contribution make, in making Victorville a safer city. Victorville City Council, June the 2nd, 2009. Mark, thank you for your service. Thank you. And uh, good luck on your future endeavors. Thank you. Uh, I really, this is really a surprise. I thought it was going to be the public works, but anyway, um, I just want to thank, you know, the council for their tremendous support of the police department. Um, you guys have truly shown that you are dedicated to public safety and together we've done some really great things and I'm sure that that will continue. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I also have a proclamation, uh, for public works. Day, and I have uh, two employees for my public works department to accept the uh, the proclamation. And what we're doing is we're going to uh, declare public works day. And I won't read all of the whereases, but uh, the last part is now there I, Rudy Cabriales, mayor of the city of Victorville, do hereby join the other members of the city council in proclaiming June the 4th, 2009, as Public Works Day. And thank you very much for all your help. I know that uh, uh, the Public Works is always there for us, not not just in the streets, but many of the other events that we do throughout the city. And uh, I can tell you they're dedicated employees, hardworking employees, and very loyal to the city. And so it's my pleasure uh, to present this proclamation to you on behalf of the City Council and to thank you for your service. The department would just like to thank the support of the city council. We've received you throughout the years and also our director, Ms. Jakar. Thank you. And if you look out uh, when you're driving around town, you see our crews out there uh, constructing sidewalks. And so the city is doing its share of the, uh, of the public works uh, 
that uh, needs to be done to keep our city beautiful, clean, and, and the streets uh, operable. Thank you. First item is item number one, which is a public comment. Public comments are restricted to three minutes. And I do have three cards, actually four cards. Anyone wishes to speak on a public comment, fill out your cards or in the foyer and bring, it to, bring them to the uh, city clerk. The first one I have is Alcatillo. And I'm back to the DIF fees again, you guys are charging these people. Uh, when these people come in to put in a mobile home, why don't you make them put in a permanent foundation right away? You don't let them build a house without a cement foundation. Because these people go five or six years without doing it, then it costs them three times as much to put in a permanent foundation. If you make them put it in when they put, it, when they put the house in, it won't cost them anywhere near as much. Plus, some of these DIFEs are through the roof. So either that or sign a contract with them when they come in saying that they know they have to put a permanent foundation in, and then if they don't want to put it in, let them sign a contract saying it, then it's their fault, and you got proof. Another thing, when you went to China, the Bank of America is the bank of this city, from what I've been told from the finance people. When you go back from China, you borrowed $3 million from a Chinese bank, uh, a Desert Community Bank owned by China. What was that about? And the business license thing, Mike Rothschild, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of in my life. If I want to rent my house, I got to come to you and get a business license, and then you got to give me a talk about how I got to do and how I got to rent my house out. I've rented houses out before, and I never had any trouble, and I don't need you or anybody up there to tell me how to do it. I've never had a problem renting a house out before. The only places they do what you want to do is in Russia and Venezuela. You better grow up. You better grow up. Next is Gene Silic. Thank you very much, Mayor and City Council. I uh, have a little bit of a complaint and don't know really what department would handle it, so I'm going to toss it in your court. I live on a cul-de-sac. We have 12 homes. And on Tuesday, usually in the morning, right before lunch, I hear the street sweeper machine come down the street, has a high whine, and he uh, drives very, very slowly. And of course, the job of the street sweeper is to sweep along the curb. However, on my street, and I can show you this every day of the week, we have a little problem. And the problem is that in the 12 homes, Many, many people, I would say at least half of the people, have done something to their garage so that the car won't go in the garage. It parks either in the driveway or it parks in the street, usually in the street. So when the sweeper comes around, he has to go around the parked cars and as I say, half of the people have cars in the street. It's only 12 homes. We're only getting about 50% of the value of the street sweeper because he can't sweep where the cars are parked. What's happened to the garages is that some people have converted them to playrooms. I have one neighbor who has a full-size pool table you put that in a two-car garage, you can't get anything in there, not even hardly get a motorcycle in. And we have another neighbor 
who uses his garage for storage and it's full right to the door with packing boxes of some kind. So I wonder if you're cognizant of the fact that in some cities, and I used to live in Irvine, there are signs that says, don't park in the street on Tuesday because the street sweeper is coming on Tuesday. And if you park on the street, you might get a ticket. And sure enough, the police car would pick out a certain street and follow the street sweeper and issue citations. Now, back in 1994, they were uh, 50 bucks. I imagine they're a little higher these days. But I'm wondering what can be done to have people pull their cars into the driveway and off the street. And I notice that I'm not picking on my own street. This is all over the area that I live in, uh, just two blocks before Eagle Ranch. And every street is a cul-de-sac. And I went into three or four of them, and I find the same situation. And I'm wondering if that's code enforcement or it's traffic control. I have no idea who would be the right people to say, can you please get the cars off the street at least on Tuesday so we can get a nice clean street. Gene, your time's up, and we'll have the appropriate. I was just going to say, due to the high winds, we have a lot of debris. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have David Lopez. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is David Lopez, and if it hasn't brought or been brought up recently or up in the high desert, here it is. In the state of California, medical cannabis has become legalized. I'm a disabled person. I use medical cannabis. Uh, there's also many other uh, disabled veterans. Disab I'm also a veteran. Disabled veterans and <clears throat> citizens as well. Um, we have to drive down to L.A. to go get our prescriptions. Uh, I don't feel it's fair. Uh, the state of uh, California has passed the law. Uh, uh, County of San Bernardino and San Diego tried suing the state of California, and to no prevail, they lost. It is coming. It is on its way. Uh, I've tried to ask the city if I could uh, start opening up a store. I went and got my business license, my seller's permit. I'm working on my 501c3 right now. Um, it's a nonprofit organization. It's all controlled. Uh, not anybody can come into this store and just get what they need. It's all, uh, you have to be verified, certified, and so on. I'm asking that the city uh, would consider, uh, I don't know if you need to make regulations or something on this, but um, like I said, it's, it's a state law. This city is in the state of California. And as, as what, I'm no attorney, but I understand that we all have to follow the state laws. Uh, also, uh, I'm a, like I said before, I'm disabled. Uh, I had a, a job for 20 years, and, and a guy went through a red light and creamed me, and I no longer have a job because of that. No health insurance, no nothing right now. Try to get uh, assistance through the state of California. Don't qualify. I have too much. I need to open up my own business and supply my own health insurance and everything else to provide for my family that I can't even get food stamps for right now. And so I'm trying desperately to get this going soon. And so um, I don't know uh, what it's going to take or what, but here I am and I'm asking for some kind of guidance or you guys to come up with some kind of regulation and to uh, get this thing going so that I can uh, get medication up here for patients who need it up here as well as I do. And there's my point. And I like to say the street sweeping thing is fine with me the way it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next we have Estelle Johnson.
This is Della Gonzalez Townsend, and I've been up here for since '02. For six years, my neighbors have harassed me, have destroyed my trees, my flowers, my garden, and I have tried to get assistance from every agency you can name. I've been there and around and five times riding, and I haven't gotten anywhere. And this harassment has to stop. I am getting very impatient with these people. I have no idea what to do. If it's on account of race, it has to stop. My people were here before you guys went across the Atlantic Ocean to come over here. If you don't like our people, why don't you go back where you belong and leave California to California? I need these people to quit ruining my trees. I've got trees that are dying, roses that are dying, tomatoes that are dying. This has been going on for years, and I haven't gotten any help from anybody. And I don't know where else to go. And I know I should go to the supervisor's office. I've called them. I tried to get them to come out and, and see what I'm talking about. And none of them have tried to assist me in any way. I don't know where else to go. And so I thought I'd come here this evening. It breaks my heart to even leave my place. As soon as I turn around, they get in, jump the yard. I spent thousands of dollars on six foot chain link fencing on three sides. I've got more, uh, cameras, surveillance cameras, and yet they sneak in there and destroy my property. And I've done nothing to these people. And I'm 85 years old, and I thought the, the, these years would be great, because they have up until the high desert. I don't know who people think the high desert belongs to. But as far as I'm concerned, it belongs to everybody, not just a few people. And if they don't like what they see here, they better go back to the country they came from. I don't know where else to go other than to come over here and rage at you guys. And I am sorry I had to do that. I am very deeply sorry. I never thought I'd have to make such comments at my age in my state that I was born in. So if you can write me or call me or tell me where to go to get these people to stop harassing me at night, running into there, killing my roses, my trees, I got lab reports saying that the Aleppo pine had sulfuric acid on it, and I'm trying to save it. My Modesto ash had chemicals put in it, and I'm trying to save it. And my, my, my apricot tree, I think they got too. I'm not sure. So you tell me where to go. Tell your time's up. Someone will contact you. You're in Mount View Acres. Okay. We'll now go to the uh, regular agendas. And we have uh, the Library Board of Trustees agenda. Revisions to the agenda? No, mm -hmm. revisions. Uh, we have the consent calendar to approval. next two agendas are the Southern California Logistics Rail Authority and the uh, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority agenda. And uh, Councilman Caldwell is the chair of those boards, so he'll do the meeting. Thank you, Mayor Cabrales. I'll treat both agendas concurrently. Uh, there is a change uh, on the consent calendar. Uh, we're going to add the companion item uh, B. the Airport Authority agenda, and uh, we're going to add it from SCLRA. In addition, item four on both agendas are the same. They deal with the changing of the regular meeting times. And we have corresponding resolutions, SCLAA 09-001 and 09-001 for SCLRA. 
So uh, a motion uh, would be in order uh, um. for both consent calendars. And a motion for item four on both agendas dealing with the changing of the regular meeting times uh, would be in order. Second. That concludes the airport authority and the rail authority agendas. Now move to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency agenda. Uh, revision to the agenda. On item number three, which is a public hearing item, the uh, Director of Economic Development has requested that this item be continued to June 16th. So the public hearing should be opened and then continued to the meeting of the 16th. Item number three is to request to adopt resolution number R09002. Uh, resolution of the Victorville Redevelopment Agency approving the fourth uh, five-year implementation plan for the Bear Valley Hook Boulevard Redevelopment Project Area. Uh, there is a request to uh, move the item to June 16th, but I will open up the public hearing. Anyone wishing to address the council on item number three? Or against? And we'll continue the public hearing to June the 16th, 2009. <coughs> A consent calendar, item, item number four. Move for approval. Caldwell? I clicked it. Clicked it. We have item number five. It's a request to adopt resolution number R09003. This is the uh, the change of the bylaws to uh, reflect the uh, change of the regular meetings and establishing schedule for open and closed sessions. Motion. So moved. Okay. Item number six. Request to adopt resolution number R09004, uh, ratifying and authorizing the use of tax uh, allocated from the Bear Valley Road redevelopment project for the purpose of housing outside of the project area. There a motion? Second. Item number seven is a request to approve a silver sponsorship for the High Desert Opportunity 2009 event in the amount of $10,000. For approval on that, just indicating also it's a reduction of 33% from the previous year. I'll second. Next, we'll have the Victorville Water District agenda. Any revisions? No revisions. Uh, we have the consent calendar. Move for approval. Second.
Item number four is a request to adopt resolution number VB, VWD0907, which is the resolution changing the regular meetings and establishing the schedule for open and closed sessions. Approval. Second. Next is the City of Victorville agenda. Visions? No revisions. We have a consent calendar, item number three. For approval. Second. <laughs> oh. Item number four is a request to adopt resolution number 09044. Again, this is establishing the dates, times, location of the regular meetings of the Library Board of Trustees, establishing a schedule for open and closed sessions. Approval. Item number five, uh, request to adopt resolution number 09045 entitled. Um, uh, Mr. Cox, do you have some information on it? I don't. Uh, the approval of a uh, finder's fee agreement between the City of Victorville and Global Power Supply, they are similar to ITM, which is an agreement you have. Uh, they basically are in the business of power equipment and have a non-exclusive agreement to try and market the Power Island related to power plant number two. And with Council's prior direction, keep all of our options open and explore. I also noticed there was a waiver in there from Inland on any Correct. problems they may or may not have perceived right. to be have. I move for approval. Uh, for resolution 09-045. Can I ask one question? Finders B? Ed? Okay. Second. Good question. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Item number six, so resolution, uh, request to adopt resolution number 09039, and the resolution establishes a, uh, a time and place for a public hearing on the sewer user fee increase. I'll move approval. Second. Item seven, to request to approve proposed amendment to the 0708 uh, Proposition 1B plan, which is local street and road improvements. Thank you. Council Member Almond, I need a vote. Item number eight is to request to approve a contract to Cooley Construction in the amount of $343,051.91 for street improvements on Park Avenue and on Yates Road.
Item number nine, request to approve the Community Services Department Master Plan for Parks and Facilities. Move approval. Second. Item 10, if request to approve resolution number 09042 entitled, it's a resolution that authorizes the city of Victorville giving approval and to destroy certain records. Number 11 is to request to approve the resolution number 09040. Uh, this is uh, revising and amending the bail schedule of the City of Victorville Parking Agency. Item number 12, request to approve resolution number 09043. Uh, this resolution, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> ratifying and authorizing the use of Texas allocated from the Bear Valley Road real redevelopment project. Item 13, request council approval amending the contract for services with Cobia Capital to $13,400 per month for an initial term of three months and a total term not to exceed one year. Second. Council Member Almond, may I get a vote from you? That's the end of the regular items. We have item 14, which is presentation from council members. I have none. I'm just gonna make one short comment. Are we gonna get the water bills finalized once and for all? The uh, paper, which is talk back, was loaded with comments about our water bill and how uh, um, we don't know how to handle it. It was a little embarrassing reading them. I have. I, 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 it, 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 deserves, it deserves an answer. We, we've got a lot of staff that's working on, on this and we need to make some major changes changes in the methodology and the way it's done and uh, computers and everything. Doing their best to make it work. A lot of it by hand. It's not working. Uh, it's going to keep <laughs> cutting every place. It's going to take quite an investment to make it right. We know we have to do it. We've been talking about it in the budget sessions in regard to Procedures and the equipment that's needed and how to go about it. And we're making some internal changes that we have finalized, but we're just doing our best to make it work. I think we've concluded that what we've been trying to do will not work. We may in fact have to go back to a year ago. That may be the answer. 
employees are doing their best, but it just doesn't. The equipment they have will not allow them to do their job, so we're doing our best to correct it. Thank you. We did have reportable action. Did Mayor, we reported that after the, uh, we came back in after the closed session and reported it. That concludes the meeting. Thank you.